Uh, but like I said, I was already a fan of the music, man, even before I got the gig. I was already listening to this stuff as a, as a kid. I already knew the music, hmm. you know. So when I started working with Alan and Alan was like, oh, yeah, we're going to play this. And like, dude, I already know the stuff, you know. Uh, and so, and I remember Alan, we were in rehearsal one time. And, and I guess Alan was so, and Virgil made this comment as well. You know, sometimes, um, sometimes people, like, from my experience, it's like, you pay attention to sometimes the small things that people say, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. especially because like in this, you know, working, you work with, you know, you in and out, you work with all these people, you work with all these musicians. You don't get to know everyone all the time. Like sometimes you may just be passing by and you only work with them one time your whole entire life. But I remember when I first started working with Virgil and um and 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 Holsworth, Virgil made a comment. He was like, Oh man, he was like, Yeah, man, you, you come to a rehearsal, man. You know, you, you know the music. You, we don't have to like stop and you know, he just kind of left it at that, right? So it was his way of saying, like, hey, you know, you're prepared every single rehearsal, right? Yeah. Uh, Alan was not prepared on every single rehearsal, <laughs> you know? And so so Alan made a comment. He was like, yeah, man. He was like, uh, he was like, yeah. He was like, whenever you want to solo, just start soloing. I don't care. <laughs> and, I, and then I made a cut and I made a joke. I was like, I said, Alan, what if you're solo? You want me to just start soloing as you're soloing? He was like, yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> so, and I guess that was their way of saying that they were very um, relieved and actually, like, happy that I was, like, really on top of the music the way I was. Mm -hmm. But but I would always tell them, like, dude, like, I always knew this music. So when you, when Alan, when we did, like, the tours and Alan would call out the songs, I just instantly go back to my childhood. I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember listening to this, you know, learning this shit. You know what I'm saying? So it was easy for me because, because I was genuinely a fan of it, you know? Mm. Yeah. 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 How was it like on the road with you guys? I mean, playing that music. Did you talk about you and Virgil, especially the rhythm section, what to do? Because I think you and Virgil was... You know, I think the most advanced, I'll, I'll put it carefully like that, but rhythm section, if you know what I mean, you know, you both guys are really digging into odd meters and polyrhythm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. But, like, but that's the thing. Um, every rhythm section that Holsworth used, it made his music sound different. Yeah. So, of course, his yeah. OG, okay, his, all, my favorite rhythm section of Holsworth was, um, was Jimmy Johnson and um and Vinny. Uh Vinny, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and Steve sure. Hunt. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, no, no, Monster. The, the, secret, yeah. the secret album. Yeah. That yeah. personally was my favorite rhythm section. You know, yes, Chad Rackman, Chad Rackman was like been one of forever, but I don't know, man. Which is something about Jimmy and uh, you know. Yeah, Vinny's and, uh, crazy. Yeah, yeah, Vinny. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just their, yeah. their chemistry. Yeah. But it's not saying that one is better than the other. It just sounded different. Absolutely. Uh, but that right there was my personal preference. And of course, me and Virgil, because I'm coming from more of a rockier, like, okay, so I'm coming more of a progressive rock, jazz type of interpretation of his music, right? Virgil is the same thing. He's progressive a little bit, but then he still has the jazz influence, but then he's kind of like, Rock too, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So it's like we're playing the same music that the other, but it sounds different though because it's our own interpretations of it. Yeah. So that being said, that's what Alan wanted. Alan did not want me to sound like Jimmy Johnson. He did not want me to sound like Jimmy Haslip. He did not want me to sound like Gary Willis. He wanted me to play his music the way that I heard it. Mm -hmm. You know, same thing with Virgil. He didn't want Virgil to sound like Vinny. He didn't want Virgil to sound like Chad Wackerman. He didn't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He wanted his music to be interpreted the way the musicians interpreted the music. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And so he made that comment. He was like, this is, you know, he was like, I, you know, he was like, he appreciates that stuff. He so I guess he felt like an enjoyment of, oh, I didn't, I didn't know my song could sound like this. I like this. Whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And 
Um, and so that's what it was. So a lot of times on stage, we would just be just having fun on stage, like just doing all kinds of crazy stuff, stuff that we probably didn't even rehearse, you yeah. know. But Alan, he liked he liked the challenges. He liked the different interpretations of his music. He liked that stuff. Yeah. And that's what he wanted. And I feel like that's the reason why me and Virgil was there because we interpreted his music our own way. Yeah. Because if he wants Vinny, he could just get Vinny. If he wants Chad Rackman, he could just get Chad Rackman. But he wanted Virgil. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, like I said, you know, I, I love you guys. But what, what you guys are doing underneath him, it's just like, man, what the, you know, what's <laughs> happening there sometimes? I'm like, and then he's playing these crazy lines over, and it's like, damn, man, that's that's crazy. He liked that stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I remember us getting off stage sometime, and 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 I remember we were in, oh my god, where were we? We were, I think, in uh, Poland, I believe. Yeah, we were in Poland, and and I remember us getting off stage, and Alan was so like. He was crying, right? Because he felt like he didn't do his best. Like, he was like, he was apologizing to me too. He's like, Anthony, I'm so sorry, man. He was like, dude, that one, that one measure on that one particular song that, that I've literally forgot about. He was like, dude, I'm so sorry I didn't hit that with you. Or like, whatever, you know what I'm saying? He, you know, he, like, although, he was definitely, you know, he's a virtuoso guitarist. The thing I really appreciated about Alan was that when he played with a band, he wanted to be a part of the band. Like, it wasn't like, oh, I'm Alan Holdsworth and it's all about me. Like, no, he wanted to everyone to be a part of the, 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 the situation. Mm. So, like, if you felt like that he wasn't keeping up, he would, he would tell me. He was like, dude, I just, you know. I, I'm sorry I wasn't on his form. So like, he would literally come apologize to me. And then, then I remember telling him, I'm like, Alan, you ain't got to apologize. I'm like, dude, like, we're just having fun. He mm. was like, yo, man. But, you know, he would take it a little bit more personal because I guess, it's, you know, it's him, it's his music, and and yeah. here I am playing all this shit, and he's not keeping up or whatever the case. I don't know what was going on through his head. But I remember him getting off stage and literally, like, apologizing to me. You know, and then I remember telling Alan, I'm like, look, man, like, we're just having fun, man. Like, I, you know, uh, look, I'm like, look, dude, like, and I'm talking to him just like this. Like, I'm talking to you. I'm like, look, dude, like, it's not even like, like, dude, like, I'm just happy, you know, that you even consider, you know, working yep. with me like this. But, dude, like, you know, it's not that serious. You know what I'm saying? But in him, it is serious. Yeah, it yeah. was serious because it's like, you know, this is. I'm playing my music. This is what he get enjoyment from. He takes it seriously, you know, and then it's like, if he felt like that he wasn't like a hundred percent, he could have been literally a 90%. That little 10% would mess up his whole entire night, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I've heard those stories. Yeah. Yep. He was very, <laughs> very self-critical. I mean, like everyone said that, yeah, which is bizarre, you know, it's, yeah. Yeah. He's very self-critical, man. Very yeah. self-critical. Like, you know, if we, if we started working on, we started working on a solo album. Sadly, it's never going to get released, but I remember working on an album, a studio album. Um, and I remember Vir Virgil uh, <laughs> calling me a couple of times because Alan would record a solo. He would uh, like it. And then the next day he wouldn't like it. You know what I'm saying? So he would just delete the whole entire solo. Oh, shit, man. Come on. And sometimes he would make a mistake and delete the whole entire song. So I remember Virgil calling me, like, hey, Anthony, can you resend that bass file? Uh, uh, Alan deleted the song again. <laughs> man. But That's he was true. very passionate. Like, if he felt like that, it, if he felt like it wasn't 100%, he would literally delete everything. That's just how passionate he was, man. He would delete everything. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. Yeah.